A suicide bomb at a government checkpoint in Syria. Rebel groups linked to al-Qaeda have been blamed. Another sign of how complicated this civil war has become and how difficult it will be to stop the bloodshed. Thank you again. Against that backdrop, international leaders met in London to talk about peace talks. Their smiles mask concern about extremism and deep splits among Syria's opposition. But they agree only a political settlement can end the war. The only sustainable way to end this conflict and the suffering of innocent Syrian civilians is through a political transition in Syria. And the purpose of our meeting today has been to send a signal of our resolve, our unity and our determination in bringing that about. On the ground, all the rebel groups are fighting to topple President Assad, but they're not united. Some are extremist Islamist groups not interested in peace talks. Others won't talk unless Assad steps down first. It's an obstacle to negotiations. And here's another. President Assad continues to insist he's not going anywhere. Regarding the point, the one related to me personally, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't run in the next election. Meanwhile, in his country, UN inspectors are continuing their work to rid Syria of chemical weapons. The head of the team said the Syrian government is cooperating. But critics say the deaths caused by conventional weapons are going unpunished. More than 100,000 Syrians have died over two and a half years of fighting. And international leaders today said their ultimate objective was to end civilian suffering. In the end, the greatest victims, the people who suffer the most, are the Syrian people themselves who are being driven from their homes and killed in the most wanton violence and who are having an increasingly profound impact on surrounding countries. <laughs> Both the UK and the US pledged more money to help the millions of Syrian refugees, one concrete outcome of today's meeting. But the key Syrian opposition group still hasn't committed to peace talks, so an end to the war is still no closer. Rajesh Merchandani, BBC News.